Hello, my name is Stiley Hayward. I would like to welcome you to the Blessed Hope Ministry. We are a King James grounded family Bible study. These lessons are not to be a substitute for regular church attendance. Nightly I direct my family through the Bible by chapter and verse. We request you to join us and to study from God and His Son Jesus Christ. You may have permission to like, send, or encourage our studies with family or friends. Edification of what God has and what He desires in our life. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. You may use our studies, but I request that you do not abuse them. For YouTube videos, subscribe below for more videos. And place the thumbs up and leave a comment or email me. Thank you. Numbers chapter 9. <clears throat> And the Lord spake unto Moses in the wilderness of Sinai in the first month of the second year. So it was two years after Egypt. It's been complete one year. First month, 12 months, here we are. After they were come out of the land of Egypt, saying, Let the children of Israel also keep the Passover at his appointed season. In the fourteenth day of this month, a bit the first month, at even six p.m., ye shall keep his appointed season. So this is called a season. It's called a time. So we adulterate the Bible by saying, as far as Christmas, tis the season. Jesus is the reason for the season. So see, you try to put Christmas into the Bible, and there's no season of Christmas ever to be found in the Bible. A season of the Passover. In the 14th day of the month, at even, you shall keep it in his appointed season, according to all the rites. Now, you see that word R-I-T-E-S? That's the only place it shows up in the Bible right there. Ceremonial rites, religious rites, rites of the church. No, it just shows up and it only shows up under the Passover. And according to all the ceremonies thereof, shall ye keep it. And Moses spake unto the children of Israel that they should keep the Passover. So this is going to be, this is a, every year. At its prescribed time, the second year, one year. They kept the Passover night in Egypt as they came out. Now it's one year later. They're going to keep the Passover again. It's coming up. And they kept the Passover on the 14th day of the first month at even in the wilderness of Sinai. They're not in the land. And yet they're keeping the Passover. According to all that the Lord commanded Moses, so did the children of Israel. This is about March, April of our calendar. Under the Roman way, it changes under the Roman calendar. Under God's calendar, it doesn't change. And there were certain men who were defiled by a dead body of a man. That they could not keep the Passover on that day or day. And they came before Moses and before Aaron on the, that day. They come, somebody's died suddenly by them. Now we've read to the Bible. You know, if any man comes by a dead man, he's unclean. For whatever reason, boom. A Jewish man, a man dies before these two men. And they approach Moses and Aaron because they want to do right with God. And they come up to Moses and Aaron and say, and those men said unto him, We are defiled by the dead body. We're unclean of a man. Wherefore, they've been listening to the law that Moses spoke. Give them that much credit. Now here comes here comes the holiday, the national holiday of Israel. And somebody just died by us. Wherefore are we kept back that we may not offer an offering of the Lord? In his appointed season among the children of Israel. Do we keep the Passover or don't we keep the Passover? We're unclean. 
And Moses said unto them, Stand still. That's what Moses says to the Red Sea. Remember that? <laughs> Stand still, and, see, and I will hear what the Lord has commanded concerning you. Uh, and, he, and it's recorded, there's no re question. You know, Moses go up to God and say, Hey, you know, these two guys down here, blah, 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 blah. He says, Stand still, let's see what God has to say about it. As God has heard what you two have said to us, God heard you. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, without Moses saying anything to God. So God does hear us. And these men were, were, were right. They were serving. They wanted to do right. That God says, I heard that. Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, If any man of you or of your posterity shall be unclean by reason of a dead body, or be a journey afar off, yet he shall keep the Passover unto the Lord. The fourteenth day of the second month, at even they shall keep it and eat it with unleavened bread and bitter. God says, okay, you're unclean now, the first month, fourteenth day, keep it the second month. And don't come to me saying, well, Lord, well, I'm unclean this one. Uh, you know. So God has allowed here and marked that, okay, the 14th of the second month, because you're unclean today. But the man that is clean and is not in a journey or forbears to keep the Passover, what I didn't do? Well, they shall leave none of it unto the morning. No leftovers. All right, now mark this one. Nor break any bone of it. John 19, 36. Why wasn't Jesus stoned according to the custom of the Jews as they tried to stone him two or three times in his life? His stones would have broke his bones. And God put this one little detail in here to say, you're not going to be stoned by my people. You're going to be crucified. Because again, being stoned with broken bones. Which would tell you how, I don't want to use the word harsh, but as far as, because God's righteous with capital punishment. But it shows you how harsh stony was. It wasn't just take a stone and boom, you know, boom. Man, you just take the fact is they full heart, maybe like a pitcher in a pitcher's mouth. <clears throat> Small rocks, big rocks. That bones were broken. According to all the ordinance that the Passover, they shall keep it. But the man that is clean and is not in a journey. So you're not in the land for whatever reason. The first month, the 14th day. And it doesn't give any causes for why you're not there. You come back on the on the second month. You better be back in the second month. You better be back by the 14th and second month. You better change your plans to be back and take care of that. The Passover. The forbear to keep the Passover, even the same soul that shall be cut off from among his people. You're, you're, you're cut off. That's it. You're done. You don't make the first Passover, okay, there's a cause for the second Passover that year, but there's no third month, 14th day. Because he has brought not the offering of the Lord in his appointed season, that man shall bear his sin. You know that bear that sin, you're going to pay for that sin for all eternity in hell. And if a stranger, a Gentile, shall sojourn among you and will keep the Passover of the Lord according to the ordinance of the Passover and according to the manner thereof so shall he do he shall have one ordinance both for the stranger the Gentile and for him that's born in the land the Jew so there comes for that Gentile when he steps up for the Passover he does the same thing that the Jew does 
There's no Gentile, you know, ways or, you know, you got to do the same thing the Jew does. And on the day that the tabernacle was reared up, the cloud covered the tabernacle, namely the tent of the testimony. That's the tabernacle in the center of the courtyard. And at even, there was upon the tabernacle, as it were, the appearance of fire unto the morning. So at night, sun goes down, there's a fire. Sun comes up, sunrise, it's a cloud. So it were so it was always the cloud covered by day and the appearance of fire by night. And when the cloud was taken up, it was lifted up somehow from the tabernacle. Then after that the children of Israel journeyed. And in the place where the cloud abode, there the children of Israel pinched their tent. So when that cloud lifted up, it was time to move. When that cloud came back down, Pitch your tent. We're staying. At the commandment of the Lord, the children of Israel journeyed. And at the commandment of the Lord, they pitched. As long as the cloud abode upon the tabernacle, they rested in their tents. Now look at the commandment there. That commandment there is, thou shalt not. This is what the Lord said. This commandment is that cloud, whether it's up and moving or down and stain. That's a commandment. The cloud. And the Bible says that Jesus is going to come in the clouds. That's a commandment to the Jews. The church is behind him. What's the commandment of Jesus Christ when he comes in the clouds as we're coming? Here I am come to rescue you. Get ready. And when the cloud tarried along the tabernacle many days. Then the children of Israel kept the charge of the Lord and journeyed not. And so it was when the cloud was a few days upon the tabernacle, according to the commandment of the Lord, they abode in their tents. And according to the commandment of the Lord, they journeyed. And so it was when the cloud abode from even unto the morning, and that the cloud was taken up in the morning, that they journeyed, whether it was by day or by night, that the cloud was taken up, they journeyed. Or whether, wh whether it were two days, or a month, or a year, that the cloud tarried upon the tabernacle, remaining thereon, the children of Israel bowled in their tents, and journeyed not. But when it was taken up, they journeyed. At the commandment of the Lord, they rested in the tents. And at the commandment of the Lord, they journeyed. They kept the charge of the Lord, at the commandment of the Lord by the hand of Moses. And it simply said that cloud moved, they moved. The cloud didn't move, it, they stayed. And that was God's commandment. That was God's ruling. You don't go starting out, you don't go about your own journey. And when that cloud began to move again, oh, I want to stay. And when that cloud rested, oh, I want to go. No, you got to do what God told you to do. Now, going back to, the, to that Passover, the second month. Let's look at 2 Chronicles 30. Second Chronicles 30, and you say that was written in there, and yet there's 30 verse 5. Second Chronicles 30 verse 5. And this is Hezekiah. 30 verse 5. So they established a decree to make proclamation throughout all Israel. From Beersheba, even to Dan, far as south to north, that they should come to keep the Passover unto the Lord God of Israel at Jerusalem. For they had not done it for a long time in such sorts as it were written. So they're, they're unclean. And Hezekiah comes up and says, Listen, we've got to keep this Passover. This is what God wants to. We have not done it. Verse 6, so the priest went with the letters from the king, Hezekiah, and his princes throughout all the land of Judah, and according to the commandment of the king, saying, Ye children of Israel, turn again, that's repent, turn again, repent, unto the Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel. And he shall return <clears throat> to the raiment of you, 
that are escaped out of the hand of the king of Assyria. So he sends these letters out all over, all over the nation of Israel. We're going to have a national Passover. Get ready, come. Repent, get right with God. We are not right with God. We have been taken over by Assyria. Let's get right. And be not, verse 7, like your fathers and like your brethren, which trespass against the Lord God of their fathers, who therefore gave them up to desolation, as you see. You see, you see the condition, the spiritual condition we are right now. It's because we're not doing right. Because our fathers didn't do right. Verse 8. Now be ye not stiff-necked, as your fathers were, but yield yourselves unto the Lord, and enter into his sanctuary, which we have sanctified forever, and serve the Lord your God with fierceness of his anger may turn away from you. I don't want God angry with us anymore. And if you turn again, repent unto the Lord your brethren, and your children shall find compassion before... Oh, I gotta sneeze. Them that, that lead them captive so that they should come again repent unto this land for the Lord your God is gracious and merciful and will not turn away his face from you if you return unto him so the posts from the city uh, excuse me so the posts passed through the city to city throughout the country of Ephraim Manasseh even Zebulun but they laughed and the scorn and mocked him. So here comes the mailman. Here comes the letter. We're going to do the Passover. <laughs> oh, yeah. We're not going to go. Remember what we read in Numbers? If you don't go, these people are... <laughs> They're going to be unclean. They're going to count for their own sins. Hezekiah is dooming them, damning them, condemning them. By their actions, no, we're not going to come. Nevertheless, divers of Asher and Manasseh and Zebulun humbled themselves and came to Jerusalem. These are the ones that got right. We will come. Also in Judah, the, the hand of God was, was to give them one heart, to do one uni, unity, the commandment of the king and of the princes by the word of the Lord. And these assembled at Jerusalem. Much people to keep the feast unleavened bread in the second month. A very great congregation. So he sends out the letters, and guess what? They, they show up the second month. It's like God knew this was going to happen. He said, oh, oh, we didn't make it for the first month. We're all here in the second month. We're here for the unleavened bread. That's the first month. And they arose and took away the altars that were in Jerusalem. This would be all the other churches in Jerusalem. Had altars to other gods. Check the yellow pages. Under churches. And all the altars for incense took they away and cast them into the brook of Jerusalem. They're getting rid of all the religion. And they're keeping God. Then they killed the Passover on the 14th day of the second month. That's the wrong month. And the priests and the Levites were ashamed. They know they're doing wrong, but, but they're doing right, but they're doing wrong. And sanctified themselves and brought in the burnt offerings. There's the offerings. These guys said, remember, the dead body, are we to bring our offerings into the house of the Lord? And they stood in their place after their manner, according to the law of Moses. We read that, Numbers. Read that, Leviticus, Deuteronomy. The man of God. The priest sprinkled the blood which they received of the hand of the Levite. And there were many in the congregation that were not sanctified. Remember those two men? Therefore the Levites had the charge of the killing of the Passovers. For everyone that was not clean. The numbers where we were nine. To sanctify them unto the Lord. And the multitude of the people, even many of Ephraim, Manasseh, Issachar, and Zebulun, had not cleansed themselves. We are in the second month. There is no other month. Numbers chapter 9. 
We just we, we got the word and we just got here too late. But our heart wanted to do right to God. Now, in the multitude of the people, verse 18, even many Ephraim, Manasseh, and Issachar, and Zebulun had not cleansed themselves, yet did they eat the Passover otherwise than it was written. But Hezekiah prayed for them, saying, The good Lord pardon everyone that prepareth his heart to seek God, the Lord God of his fathers. Though he be not cleansed, what we read today, according to the purification of the sanctuary, and the Lord hearkened to Hezekiah and healed the people. And the children of Israel were present at Jerusalem, kept the feast of unleavened bread, seven days, the great gladness. And we can go and finish. And then the other seven days were kept 23 to 27. You know, that's in Numbers 9. And I think that was written there because God foreknew what was going to happen in Hezekiah's time. By the time I realized, hey, we haven't kept the Passover. He sent out the post, the mailman. Oh, here, come. And by the time those people that did want to get and want to get right had the fear of God and they come to Jerusalem like they're supposed to and they check their calendars, oh man, it's the second month. And they kept on doing the work and they kept on doing the work and the priests are ashamed. And according to Numbers chapter 9, God says, there's no other day you could do it, but here you are. Your heart was right. And God healed them. And God accepted the offering. Because in unity, their heart was together. And they couldn't do it the right day because they were unclean. And Hezekiah's prayer is, it's supposed to be Abed 14th. And I forget what the name of the second month is. We are in second month. And maybe the priest brought to Hezekiah and said, look, it says right here in Numbers 9. I don't think it says Numbers 9, but here it says in Numbers. We can keep it in the second month. But we're going to keep it the second month, but we're not ready still. We're still unclean, and we're doing the Passovers, and we're, we're purifying ourselves. We're, we're getting ourselves ready, but, man, we are just. And Hezekiah goes, God, we want to do right. We want to be right with you. We want to please you. And God says, I know what you do. I see what's going on. I see your heart. Yes. I healed you. So there's a case we read in the law, and it's actually happening. 